Hello and welcome to Witches of the Revolution in about three minutes. It is a game for one to four players. The game has a solo mode. Playtime is under an hour. It's a reasonably simple game. We all know the story of the American Revolution, Paul Revere riding out to warn of the coming of the English, Washington crossing the Delaware, and evil redcoats beaten back by plucky Minutemen. What's left out of the history books is the truth. All the critical events of the War of Independence were supported by secret cabals of American witches. This is their story. In order to win and safeguard the revolution, the witches must complete all four objectives before the event deck runs out, or the tyranny level gets too high. Cooperative. Each player represents a different cabal of witches supporting the revolution. Deck building. Players start with a standard deck representing their cabal and improve it through play. Player turn. Each player takes a full turn before passing to the next player. First, draw a recruit card and add it to the recruit spaces, moving all recruits to the right. If a recruit ends up in the discard space, remove it from the board. Then draw an event card, sliding all event cards to the right. If it has a when played effect, resolve that now. If an event with a liberty bell moves into a space with a liberty bell, increase tyranny by one. If an event with a gun moves into a gun space, remove a recruit from the available pool. Now you can act and recruit. In order to recruit from the available pool, you remove cards from your hand equal to the pentacle cost of the card recruited. This card costs three pentacles, so you must remove cards equal to its cost to recruit. Some spaces provide discounts for recruitment. The recruit is placed on top of your deck for use next turn. Acting allows you to deal with one of the events on the event track. In order to remove the event, you must pay one of the costs shown by discarding cards with the appropriate symbols. In this case, four green symbols. You can then remove one trophy marker from an objective of either color shown on the event card. It need not be the color you played. Unaligned events and catastrophes can use any combination of card colors. You may then discard any cards and draw up to a full hand of five cards. If drawing causes you to reshuffle, advance the moon track one step. The higher the moon track, the harder actions are to take. It is now the next player's turn. Why would you like this game? It's quick, fun, and fast-paced. It takes the traditional deck-building formula and adds a few twists. The best of these is having to pay cards to get new cards and adding a penalty each time you reshuffle your deck. This means you can't just blast through your deck repeatedly to draw the good cards and dump the rest. The event deck can be customized to increase or decrease the game's difficulty. It's pretty easy to learn and teach and can be a good gateway game for new players. The single best thing about the game is the theme, exemplified by the objective cards. Whether it's curing Paul Revere's lycanthropy or imbuing the Liberty Bell with power, the game playfully riffs on tropes from the War of Independence. However, if you are a history puritan and find the American Revolution a very serious topic, this might annoy you. Ditto if the idea that the US owes its statehood to cabals of witches offends you. While we enjoy the game, some players might find it slightly disconnected from the deck-building, puzzle-based mechanics. For a serious game looking at American history, I recommend Freedom the Underground Railroad. And for another cooperative game about revolutions, this time in modern America, I recommend Block by Block the Insurrection Game.